Well, friends, ladies and gentlemen, let me present to you CPA Daniel, uh, C Miss Penny Breslin, founder of Money Penny LLC, California. And I would request C. Ravi Patwa from Guwahati to kindly escort her to the dais. Penny, it's a call for you. Profile of Penny is on the large screen for you to just look at it. May I request Manish Goyal? Penny! Who oh, this? CM Manish Goyal to welcome Penny with a flower. <laughs> first came to India in 2000 and I was teaching, I think there were about 50 CAs in Bangalore in a room, and the whole time I was talking to them about how to use QuickBooks, I'd go, did you understand? And they go, I go, okay, let me explain it a different way then. I didn't realize I was, okay, okay, okay. Tick, 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 tick. Gotten pretty good at that. Now. Um, thank you. Thank you, Sanjeev. Thank Intuit. Intuit's some people that asked me to come here. Thank you all for inviting me to a beautiful city. I've never been to Kolkata before. So it's a first for me. I like first. I think if they had asked me to come to a place I'd already been, I wouldn't have been so I would have said, nah, because <laughs> I usually come to India at a different time of the year, not like this hot. Um take it down a little bit. I have a big voice. Okay? Alright, thanks. Can you all hear me? Yes. Alright. I'm gonna try to go through this very quickly. I really don't, all I gotta do is say, hello Ms. Bendir. Lord, because this thing is popping up on my face no matter what I do. And Mr. Agwal, who was here earlier, was that how you pronounce his name? Agwal, yeah, okay. What they said, remember it. 15 years ago in the United States, we were telling CPAs this exact same thing. And you know what they did? They ignored us. No, it's never going to happen. Never going to happen. The demographics has changed. Everybody in here who's a millennial, raise your hand. Millennials, raise your hand. Millennials, you can't hear me? No millennials here? You're dead. Go away. Not properly. Sound is not coming. Even if you're not a millennial, stop thinking like one. You know what I tell CPAs in the United States? Don't hire an accountant. Don't hire a bookkeeper. Go out and hire a two-year educated person who has some understanding of finance and knows a debit and a credit. All right. You know what I tell them to hire? Hire somebody like me, but 20, 30 years younger. I call myself an app concierge. I onboard the clients. I bring them into the technology and then I hand them off to my team in India. And my team in India knows what the goal is. They know what the apps work like. I don't care what the GL is. The GL is nothing. It's the apps on the software stack that actually feed all the data that are the most important thing. And my team needs to know what that data is supposed to do, how it's supposed to affect the GL, and what the ultimate outcome is. They already know debits and credits. Debits, credits. Simple. That's a count. Simple. Repeatable by a robot. What isn't repeatable, what the human aspect of it is, and a gentleman asked about the human aspect of it over here, I don't see him sitting in the same spot. The human aspect is when you can bring to the business owner an understanding of what those debits and credits mean today and going forward in their business. Because now what you've done is you've become an irreplaceable consultant that helps them grow their business. And if you think technology is fast and affecting your business, that's the same for everybody else. Everybody else has this same problem. Well, what they don't have is your understanding of how the numbers affect them. The difference between income and profit. 
is totally lost on a lot of business owners. You want to know why? They didn't go to school to learn that. They went to school to learn how to be carpenters, painters, house builders, bankers, real estate agents. They didn't go to school to learn what you learn, which is what's the value of the money I have, and how can I make it work for me, and how can I help it grow my business. And that's the human aspect that you can give to this. So yeah, let the technology run everything else. That's all dummy work. <coughs> so we get changes inevitable. This is the way we did accounting, and this is the way you're probably still doing accounting in some places, right? Yeah, you got your paper, you got your pen, got your little eye shade, you know. Then we had Y2K. <laughs> And India popped up in the market as an opportunity because we could get people working while we slept. By the way, who said that? Who was it? Mexico is your competitor in the United States for outsourcing. And I'll tell you why. Thanks to Barack Obama. <laughs> The highest number of South, Amer South Americans have been shipped back to their own country, and they are bilingual. They speak English and they speak Spanish. The second predominant language in the United States is Spanish. 52% of the population of California, the 11th largest economy in the world, is Latino. That's why Hillary Clinton got a vice president that could speak Spanish. It's the only way she was going to win. I didn't go far. <laughs> Bernie! Anyways, so you guys were really good because you were very fast and you were very accurate and you got the data in. Woo! But now, on my cell phone, I have an app. By the way, I run a global business off of this. A smartphone, a Samsung, not an iPhone. I'm anti-Apple. No, no, I'm not really anti-Apple. It's just this is a lot cheaper than an Apple. <laughs> and a Windows 10 tablet. I have a managed server. My India team logs into my managed server. So when I talk to a client, I say, nothing goes to India. India comes to you. Uh, security is tight, IP to IP. Run the whole thing. And on this little cell phone app, there's an app called AutoCAT. And I've been beta testing it now for six months. I open it up, I snap a picture of a receipt, an invoice, whatever. I snap a picture of the view of the gas tank when I just filled up my gas in my car. And the app says to me, how would you like to handle this transaction? And I say to the app, Credit card ending in 3947. Meal, dinner with Sanjeev, business meeting. It automatically goes into zero on QuickBooks, allocates it to the correct account, and attaches the image. What do I need you for? What I need you for is to tell me what the value of that lunch was and how it's going to affect me. That's what I need as a business owner. I am not a CPA. I'm not a bookkeeper. But I had to do those jobs, and I sucked at it. I was miserable. I hated it. I'm so grateful for my Indian crew and my partners in India because they love doing that stuff. Thank God. So I stick with the technology. And I tell accountants, you need to hire a technology specialist, a young person, who believes in this stuff, who lives this stuff every day, and you need to listen to them. You need to move out of your box, and you need to listen to them. Because if you don't do it, you're gonna, what's going to happen to you is what happened in the U.S. You're going to die. Mergers and acquisitions are huge in the U.S. right now. Firms are selling, and they're merging. They don't need the number of people that they used to need. What they need is speed. They need real-time access, because the business owners know they can get it. Business owners have always driven what we've done. The business owners know. 
So this is my life. The biggest problem I have is turning it off. But I've become pretty effective at that too. This is what's important. Whether you're insourcing or outsourcing, whether you're talking to your employees or you're talking to clients, communication, the process, what the ultimate goal is, and constant, constant training. You can never stop learning. Well, if you can never stop learning, when are you going to have time to do the work? That's what you're saying. You're all exhausted. You're all tired. You're all getting sitting there in the middle age paunch, and by the time you're 30, you're hunched over like this, right? How's life doing? Everybody happy? I go out surfing every morning, and I'm 60. What do you do? <laughs> oh, he's trying to win brownie points. <laughs> Far from it, darling. This is the cycle when you're dealing with your companies here in India, you're dealing with companies in the US, the UK, anywhere. It's the same cycle. It's the same cycle of everything. A debit is a debit, a credit is a credit. It's all this noise in the middle that screws it all up. And we gotta clear that noise up. You gotta do it with your clients. And most importantly, you've gotta do it with your internal team. Now, I really had cut my teeth on working in an accounting company when I started outsourcing. Because prior to that, I was just by myself doing QuickBooks accounting for a company. And I screwed it up so bad, I wrote a book on how I fixed everything. Because basically I'm a teacher, right? I taught history. So now I do accounting, isn't that weird, right? So, and then I became kind of famous, and some guy in Bangalore sent me an email going, would you come to Bangalore and teach us how you use QuickBooks? By that time, we were already putting QuickBooks in a hosted environment. How many of you work on QuickBooks in a host hosted environment? One? What? Oh, of course, the millennial in the group. Oh, yeah, the other millennial, way back there. Yeah, you got it. Oh, it's a few more. They're all, they're all the young kids, right? Well, even that's going away. The first year in 1999 that we hosted QuickBooks on a server, we put 3,000 seats on. In one year. Okay? If you don't have a team that you have clear instructions with and clear communications with and that you're training, it'll be a constant put in a debit, put in a credit, sir, sir, sir. Kind of like what went on here. It's a really good indication. When I went to, to Chennai for the first time, that's what I saw out on the floor, 350 accountants who were constantly looking to somebody up the food chain to say, did I do what I did? Was it right? What did that do? Your 12 hours came down to about actual two hours of world work. What's the value of that to me? So what you have to do is educate your people. You have to educate them. I'm going to talk a little bit more about that later. The next thing is a service level agreement, an SLA. When I'm working in, with a company in the US who's a direct client of mine, or if I'm working with a CPA that is outsourcing to us a lot of their bookkeeping, I have a service level agreement. It is an agreement that states, this is what you want. This is what you need to do in order for us to give you, you what you want. And this is how we are going to give it to you. And we have everybody check it off and say, do you agree to this? Do you agree to this? Do you agree to this? Once we have that in, everybody on my team sees that service level agreement. Because I don't want anybody calling me two weeks later going, are we supposed to do this? Because if you ask me that question, you obviously didn't access the shared document that we had that let you know what we did. Now I got a problem. Do I have to retrain you? Or are you just too stupid to work for me? So I always have a service level agreement with everybody. And you know, one of the reasons ways I found out about this was when I was working in outsourcing and coming to India, I obviously was surrounded by a lot of people that were already outsourcing IT work and manufacturing. And I listened to them. Because if you think that it's any different on your side, it isn't. 
You have the same concerns that they did. Here are the barriers to communication. These are really important barriers that you need to acknowledge. I acknowledge them on my side. Cultural differences are huge. But you can get rid of them. You can mitigate them. I am my employees' advocates. My employees are more important to me than my clients are. Because if my employees aren't doing a good job, and if they're not happy at the job that they're doing, and they're the front line of dealing with my clients, I used to be a school teacher and I went to Catholic school so I can stare you down so bad. I'm kicking on that, sorry. But you deserve it. <laughs> I am their front line. If I see that somebody is mistreating one of my employees, because I see all communications through the dashboard and our workflow, if I see something that's not positive, if I see something that's derogatory, I'm on the phone to that CPA going, hey, we're not doing your work anymore. You can't treat my people like that. Consequently, and conversely, the same goes the other way. I hold them accountable too. But if I didn't have these technology tools at my hand, do you think I could do that from 6,000 miles away? No. If I don't have boots on the ground, if I'm not watching my employees, and if I'm not enabling them, I'm going to lose. So he, here are all the barriers. And I want you, you know, if you want to take this, this is something that's very detailed and we don't have time to go into it. So this is like a 60,000 foot level review, because there isn't any time. But you really need to look at your company. Because what you have, before you have an accounting firm, is you have a business. And you need to think of it from the standpoint of being a business owner and not an accountant. Okay? Not a chartered accountant, not a regular account, not a cost account or anything. First, you're a business. And how is your business operating before you take your first client? This is what you're getting right now. One person in the middle directing everybody. Well, the problem with that is there's no growth opportunity there. There's no expansion opportunity. And so do you find yourself always going out and looking for a new client? I know you are because just in the first week when I signed up and said I'd be willing to do this, I got emails from a ton of people going, can you send us some business? Can you send us some business? Can you send us some business? I delete, 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 delete. I don't answer those emails. I don't know who you are. That's the way Americans are. I don't know who you are. I've had people call me up and go, Penny, do you know this company? Like, nope. Never been there. No boots on the ground. I can't verify. I gotta get rid of this. And I use technology to do it. I don't need to be an accountant to run an accounting firm. So not only is the guy next to you your competitor, a smart entrepreneur can be your competitor too, who's never taken a course in accounting. And that's happening in the U.S. right now. This is important. The service level agreement is important for a couple of things. First of all, we revisit it on a regular basis. Anybody here ever hear the term scope creep? Scope creep. Okay, here's a question. Have you ever done work for a client because at the beginning, you, they said they wanted this and you did that work, and then oh, incrementally over time, you were doing more work and more things that weren't part of the original agreement, and you weren't getting you weren't getting the billing out for it, you weren't getting paid properly for it. Because first of all, you didn't have the service level agreement, and if you did, you never went back and revisited it, and you didn't share it with your employees, so they just go and do the work anyways. And the client said, I didn't authorize you to charge me more for that. You didn't tell me you were gonna charge me more for that. So where does the buck stop? Where, whose problem is that? Yeah. It's your problem, the business owner. The business owner. The person who actually put this accounting firm together is the business owner. It's your problem. This has to be constantly revisited. Here's the other thing that happens. When you constantly revisit it, 
not only do you keep scope free from happening, but when you find, oh my God, there's a potential for more business with the same client. The cost of client acquisition is so damn high, why do you keep on trying to get new clients when there's so much money left on the table with the client you already have? And I'm sure it's the same for India, because India is its own economy. You have your own economy of scale. In 20 years, this country has changed so much from what I saw when I first landed in Bangalore in 2000. Documenting the process, huge. You've got to get the process down, and you've got to share it, and you've got to update it constantly because the process changes as fast as the technology changes. And if your client is successful and their business grows, then of course the process is going to change, right? We use a combination of digital documents on a shared server and also video recordings and audio recordings. So when I onboard a new CPA firm, I actually get them on a shared screen, have them bring up their software and say, okay, this is a task you want us to do because we're not just doing bookkeeping and reconciliation. We're doing trial balance work. We're doing tax work. We're doing analysis. What exactly do you want it to look like? You need to show us. Example, we have a client in California who, um, it's probably one of our larger clients. And they had eight project managers who sent us work. The project managers were complaining that we weren't doing something correctly. It took that firm's operation manager, who was my direct contact, two weeks to get to me about this. Threw up on a shared meeting, and she said, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, you're not doing this, and the was in the chat box going, Penny, we can't do that. We can't do that. So I said, Jeannie, would you pull up your screen and show me where that button is that you have that allows you to do what you want us to do? She goes, there it is, right there. I said, switch the screen over to last side. So I said, Jenna, pull up your screen, open up the software, show her. We didn't have the button. She hadn't told her IT department what we needed to do our job. The only way we could have seen that is if she, if I, the only way I was going to convince her because she said, no, no, I told them. I told them to give you everything. I go, well, okay, they didn't. And here's proof. The next day, we were doing it exactly the way they wanted because we had the access. So you have to constantly look at that. A lot of the issues, a little tiny niggling issues that will kill the engagement, if somebody's not there watching the communication, Making sure it's facilitated. Making sure that everybody is on equal playing field. Do you have an internal DMS auditing system? All of this? Do you have this? Because if those of you who want to say, Penny, send outsourcing to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you have all this in place? Because if you don't, I won't go near you with a 10-foot pole. Because you'll fail. And if you fail, my reputation's at stake. And I don't like you enough for that. I don't like anybody enough of that. Maybe. We have everything digital, everything storage. There is no pen. There are no papers. Everything is paperless. And in the United States, the hot word in 2005 was paperless. You bring that up now and people yawn going, oh, I'm way beyond that. They are way beyond that. And the ones that aren't are old and failing and you just just they're going, okay, can I sell my firm? Uh, it's worth a lot less if you don't have this stuff in place. Training. Non-stop. You need to allocate a specific amount of time within your firm to cross-train. <coughs> Several times today, I asked somebody if I could get them to do something. And it went up the food chain, and I saw them ask one person, another person, another person, another person. Anybody ever play that game telephone when you were kids? You know about that game? Does anybody hear about it? You have to like acknowledge, go, yes or no, I don't care, give me an answer. OK, so you know the game. You whisper in somebody else's ear, and when it gets down to the end, it's nothing what you said at the beginning, right? 
All right, there you go. Thank you. Damn, I'm not the millennials again. What is it with you old folks? Are you afraid of me? No, you're not. Really? I won't beat you. Oh, you're still a millennial. <laughs> well, like, you know, I can be kind of tough. I'm blunt. I know, I'm East Coast, so I'm blunt. But here's the thing, is I've only got 45 minutes, so I've got to get through this, and so I don't want to drag it out, and I don't believe in being politically correct, which is why I didn't vote for Hillary. So, how often do we train? <laughs> how often do we train, constantly? When, we were, when I was working at Expotax in Chennai, there was no cross-training going on when I went in there. <clears throat> and it took a lot of effort on my part to get them to raise their hand to ask a question. Don't let them be afraid of that. And so we set up a regular schedule. And now when I went back to the States, I said, I want a schedule of classes you're going to give to each other. I want each person on the team to be dedicated to training on a specific topic to everybody else on the team. Because now I've got ownership. I've got buy-in. I've got somebody taking accountability and responsibility. And that empowers them. So now I got a better employee and a happier employee, and they want to stay with me. Okay? Get my drift? Any questions? You can ask questions. I won't bite your head off. Too much. So develop your people. I make all of my people get certified in any software that we're using. This year, two of them are coming to San Jose to QuickBooks Connect. I was supposed to go to ZeroCon with one of them, but I'm here instead. <laughs> so I didn't get to do ZeroCon this year, but we'll get, we'll, we'll get the training in virtually through um, the online systems. It's all out there. You can learn it. Anybody can learn it. And it's accounting, it's easy, it's debits and credits. What isn't easy is the human aspect of the analysis. And that's where you come in, that's where your value added is. About 2004, five, somewhere around there, the company that I, um, I originally had set up was in Bangalore and I had gone out to visit them um, I no longer was working with them directly, but they were still friends. And they asked me if I would put on a training class for QuickBooks again, like I had years before. And they brought a bunch of accountants in the room, and these accountants were all working in outsourcing companies all over India, right? And I was appalled. Appalled because it wasn't their fault that they were doing a bad job. It was, this is, I've been getting just this focus with blinders on my side, right? And I'm not about allowed to look left or right. I just do this one thing. Well, if you don't have a full understanding of whole, how that whole package works, when you're doing something, you're not doing it.